But with all of that said, let's uh, go through the announcements and share a little bit of what's actually happening here at Kenwood. And so first of all, um, I don't want you to forget, it is the cold season. And by cold, I'm not just talking about the sniffles and the cough, but also the temperature. And we are collecting for this uh, month of October, uh, cold weather clothing, which includes coats, boots, mittens and gloves, um, hats, but it says no scarves. So uh, if you have a, a special feeling for those who may be going to be suffering from a lot of uh, cold this winter and want to help them, uh, there is a box in the Messiah room, and you're welcome to bring those on Sunday morning or other mornings uh, that uh, fits your schedule. Tomorrow is Monday, and uh, we are continuing our Bible study in the Gospel of Mark, and uh, we are meeting at set, uh, 6.30, excuse me, and this is in person, but masked in distance, but we invite you to come and share uh, Monday uh, evening Bible study with us. Don't forget, too, October 21st, we have our spaghetti dinner that's going to be held. It's curbside pickup only. But this is Thursday, October 21st from 5.30 until 6.30. Uh, for those of you who are students, uh, either SPAS or UMB or whatever, uh, please let us know. And you are welcome to come and receive spaghetti dinner for free. And then on October 31st, immediately following our worship service, we have our special congregational meeting. Uh, the intent of this is just to finalize some uh, bylaw uh, changes and the constitutional amendment. So uh, please take notice of that. This can be attended both in person and or a uh, Zoom, and then it will be available to you uh, in email once the time gets uh, closer. I'm just uh, curious, any other announcements this morning? If there are, uh, no other announcements. Let us prepare our hearts to worship with our praise and music. Mm -hmm.
Christ, would you please rise? The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And also with you. Let us join in the Kyrie. Kyrie eleison. Lord, Lord have, have mercy. Christe eleison. Christ, Christ have, have mercy. Christe eleison. Lord, Lord have, have mercy. mercy. Let us pray. Almighty and ever living God, increase in us your gift of faith, that forsaking what lies behind and reaching out for what lies ahead, we may follow the way of your commandments and receive the crown of everlasting joy through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Amen. You may be seated. Psalm for the day is Psalm 90, uh, beginning with verse 12. Again, I invite you to respond to the, res to the psalm with the bold letter verses. So, teach us to number our days, that we may apply our hearts to wisdom. Return, O Lord, how long will you turn? Be gracious to your servants. Satisfy us by your steadfast love in the morning so that we shall rejoice and be glad all our days. Make us glad as many days as you have lived with us, and as many years as we suffered in mercy. Show your servants your works and your splendor to their children. May the graciousness of the Lord our God be upon us. Prosper the work of our hands. Prosper. Yet without sin. Let us therefore approach. 
approach the throne of grace with boldness so that we may receive mercy and find grace to help in time of need. Here ends the second reading. Thanks be to God. Let us uh, join in uh, speaking the uh, Alleluia, the Gospel of uh, Acclamation. Alleluia, Lord, to whom shall we go? Alleluia, you have words of eternal life. Alleluia, Alleluia. The Gospel for today is the Gospel according to Mark, chapter 10, beginning with verse 17. Glory to you, O oh Lord. I invite you to rise. <laughs> As Jesus was setting out on a journey, a man ran up and knelt before him and asked him, Good teacher, what must I do to inherit eternal life? Jesus said to him, Why do you call me good? No one is good but God alone. You know the commandments. You shall not murder. You shall not commit adultery. You shall not steal. You shall not bear false witness. You shall not defraud. Honor your father and mother. He said to him, Teacher, I have kept all these since my youth. Jesus, looking at him, loved him and said, You lack one thing. Go sell what you own and give the money to the poor, and you will have treasure in heaven. Then come, follow me. When he heard this, he was shocked and went away grieving, for he had many possessions. Then Jesus looked around and said to his disciples, how hard it will be for those who have wealth to enter the kingdom of God. And the disciples were perplexed at these words, but Jesus said to them again, Children, how hard it is to enter the kingdom of God. It is easier for a camel to go through the eye of a needle than for someone who is rich to enter the kingdom of God. They were greatly astounded and said to one another, Then who can be saved? Jesus looked at them and said, For mortals, it is impossible, but not for God. For God, all things are possible. Peter began to say to him, Look, we have left everything and followed you. Jesus said, Truly I tell you, there is no one who has left house or brothers or sisters or mother or father or children or fields for my sake and for the sake of the good news who will not receive a hundredfold. Now in this age, houses, brothers and sisters mothers and children and fields with persecutions and in the age to come eternal life but many who are first will be last and the last will be first the gospel of the lord praise, praise to you lord christ. christ you may be seated well i'm going to put my mask on because i might have a couple of young girls to come up my kids message. You guys want to come on? You don't have to. It's okay. Okay. Oh, if, if you do, that's great. Come on up. I'm interested in kind of seeing how you guys feel about particular things. So, other than being sad about being up here, how are you doing today? <laughs> <laughs> okay. Did you see who else came up as well? Yeah. Good job. Oh yeah, we, we've got a uh, visiting uh, dragon. What's the dragon's name? What is it? Thistle. Thistle. Can you look that up? Can you see Thistle? Oh, not see Thistle. He came with the church today because Thistle travels. I understand he is from the school and they send this with one of the kids on the weekend. And so Thistle gets to go with one of the kids during the weekend and uh, they get to have the presence of Thistle with them. So glad that this was with us. Is this all a happy dragon or is he a, a kind of a sour dragon? He's a happy dragon. That's good. That's nice to have a happy dragon. I don't know about sour dragons, but hopefully this is a good happy dragon. Well, I want to talk to you a little bit about something, and that's about this young man who we meet in the story today. And he's a really rich person. So he's got lots of money, he's got lots of property. But he also is kind of sad. And he's sad because Jesus asked him to do something. Have you ever been sad before? 
other than coming up here, of course. Yeah, so we get sad, don't we? And what we do, we sometimes feel like our, our feelings aren't always heard. And so that's, a, oh, I see we got a book that goes with Thistle. We have to write a story about what Thistle does. It's Thistle's book. It's Thistle's book. Oh. So Thistle, as a happy dragon, comes with us today. But he also sometimes gets sad, right? And like anything does. And then we have to figure out what to do with that. So we're going to be talking a little bit about what to do when we get sad. The one thing we know in the story is this, that even though this person, this man is very wealthy, is sad because she just asks him to give up his wealth to take care of people, that Jesus still loved him. And that's important because we hear Jesus loves a lot of people, but we always think that Jesus only loves the good people, right? And, like, and, and happy dragons. Uh, but Jesus loves everybody. And that's an important piece of that story, that Jesus loves us even when we're sad, even when we don't know what to do with our sadness. And even though he's grieving, Jesus doesn't stop loving him. He still loves him. And Jesus loves us even when we're grieving or when we have something sad happen to us. So it's important for us to know that we have the kind of Jesus that we can come to, right? And that he will walk with us. And I think that's a, a, a lesson that we have to have. So what I brought, I didn't bring this, I wish I had a thistle to show the message today, but I brought uh, some Kleenex tissues, and, and we sometimes need those tissues, right? Because sometimes we're sad and we cry, and then we need to know that we have some place to put our tears. Um, I just want to let you know that when you have your tears, you can also bring them to Jesus and let him know how you feel. And that that helps us work through that. Here's one of the things we do know about when we're sad. When we're sad and we're by ourselves, that's a, that's a, that's a really bad combination. So one of the things we know is that we have to go to people, go to dad, talk to dad about our fears or our, what we're sad about. But we can always know that Jesus is walking with us and we can tell him what we're sad about. So I want you to know that so you can feel that there's someone there for you always, and no matter where you are, no matter what's happening in your life. Okay? So you can go back to places, and I hope you're not sad, and that you always feel good about coming up here, but if you don't, it's okay. It's okay, no problem. emotional 
and mental health. Now, I'm not a professional, so don't, don't get me wrong, but I'm tying this to the scripture lesson for today because I think that we are in a time where emotional and mental health are on the rise, and we had better start talking about that as a subject or we're not doing our job. Because I don't think that God is only concerned about what happens to us when we die and the moments that it takes from our death to get up to heaven. I think God has a lot bigger agenda than that. And I hope you'll agree with me that God cares about what happens to us on an emotional level. That He cares about what happens to us on a physical level. He certainly cares about what happens to us on our spiritual level as well. All three of those are pieces of the puzzle that make up what we understand as God's care for us. So to talk about, to consider mental health today, I think is a viable and very important message. Now once again, Jesus meets people, just as he's going along, he, you know, he says he's on a journey. I never know, Jesus seems to be always on a journey. I like to know who packs his lunch, because he's, he's constantly going from place to place, and as he's going from place to place, he's always meeting people. Now that may be a clue for us that we should also be vigilant, that God may place people in our past who both need help or who can offer help to us. That we are both receivers and recipients of God's care, but we're also those who are called upon to also reach out to people and help them through life. Both of those are there and present. So in the past uh, few weeks, Jesus has met many people on the road, and uh, from crowds of people, each of them in need, trying, uh, and they are always uh, asking him for help, and it seems like he is always attending to them and their strange needs, whether that's the feeding of 4,000 or curing a blind man from Bethsaida, uh, Jesus seems to find himself in the position of healer and or shepherd. On three occasions now in the scriptures in the last few weeks, he has taken care of children, he has placed them in his, in his arms, he has blessed them, and he has told that those who are not taking care of them, that they should beware because if you do not take care of these children and their faith, because that belongs to the kingdom of God, and if you want to be a part of the kingdom, you have to have the same mindset as they do. So we have this wonderful storyline that continues today. Today is no different than the circumstances of, their, of the meeting of the, this rich man is not so important. In fact, the misguided man then, with all of his wealth, is still just as unhealthy a person as any of the other people that we have met. He is a wealthy man, which means that his physical needs are probably being met. But in other ways, he is just as ill as the blind man from the sand. The story only somehow hints at this illness, but see if this somehow doesn't make sense to you this morning if you listen to the text. Now this man's wealth has come by means of many different ways, but important is the, the cure that Jesus offers or the instruction that Jesus gives him reminds us that most of it probably came through fraud and probably a lot of human slavery. He has acquired his wealth by taking advantage of other people's misfortunes. He has bought up their lands, those especially who have been financially distressed, and then with his wealth, he undercuts those who can't hold on to their property. And he takes advantage of that. He's defrauded them. Add to that, that this man doesn't labor for his properties, but he pays others to do this work for him. Perhaps even the very people that he has defrauded, allowing them to stay on their property and then just working for him as his slaves. Now Jesus sees through this charade and tells the rich man that although he cannot inherit eternal life, no bargaining involved in inheriting something. Think about that. To inherit means that you are given something as a gift. It doesn't come by because you work so hard to, to achieve that. It's the gift after all. But if he is to come clean with God, then he needs to first come clean with those that he has wronged, those who he has cheated, those 
he has defrauded. Which is why Jesus tells him to go, sell what you own and give the money to the poor, those you took advantage of. Then, then come, follow me. Two things stand out from this encounter. One is that, like the, the blind and starving and little children, Jesus still loves him. And the text tells us that. He is grieved that this man is so somehow caught in this cycle of buying and acquiring that he forgets the people that are marginalized because of his activity. Two is that often our illnesses are more than illnesses that only affect our bodies. Illnesses come in both body, mind, and spirit. And probably this man is suffering from all of those, but by all outward appearances, everything seems to be hunky dory. I've done all these things just as God has told me. I'm feeling quite good about myself. Thank you very much. Like I mentioned with the kids, mental illness combined with isolation is a deadly combination. If we are looking for some good advice, the scriptures are full of great suggestions. There might be a couple that we might listen to from today's lessons. The first one from the Psalms, teach us to number our days. It's easy to lose track of time, to forget how precious each day is. What is truly important? Mental illness happens for many reasons, but one of them is when things become more important than people, than those we love. When we trade things for relationships, Jesus seems to always make time for those he loves, and he loves us. Share some time with him, and he will share time with you. Studies show that people who spend time with their Creator, whether it be in prayer or whether it be out in nature, whether it be reading the scriptures, somehow there is a satisfaction that happens there and there is a, a benefit health-wise and there tends to be longer life given. Then I love the question that the disciples ask, <laughs> then who can be saved? The disciples are greatly astounded by Jesus' words. Their whole lives have focused on the accumulation of things, and they see salvation as just one more thing to be acquired. This illness is running rampant in our world today. We keep working the system, hoping to inherit the kingdom of salvation. It's got to be somehow exhausting when we're constantly working for something that's meant to be given as a gift. Have you ever done that? Where you try to earn your parents' love? And you work and work and work and you try to do everything and you're just exhausted doing it, only realizing later on that your parents love you no matter what. And if they don't, that is their loss, right? Their illness, their issue. But that love can never be somehow earned. It is always meant to be gift. Jesus suggests a better way, a way that takes the pressure off. Jesus says salvation is ours. It's yours already. And it's accomplished by God. You can't do anything to get it, to earn it. It's given to us as a gift. So stop stressing about it. Much of mental illness revolves around uh, false expectations uh, that happen to drive us to despair and to crazy kind of things, and only to realize, hopefully, that, that none of that matters. It's already yours. Salvation is ours. So relax. Take it easy. I think we have misunderstood this truth. But worse than that, we in fact don't trust it. We turn ourselves inside out trying to buy God off. There is a warning here, Jesus says. Listen, God's gifts is all you need. You need to know that it's yours. And don't worry about anything. 
Then many who think themselves to be first will be last, she just says, and the last will be first. Because the harder we try, the more elusive it becomes, and the longer it uh, sits there gnawing at us. But when we receive God's love as a gift, His salvation that is already ours in Christ Jesus, we can just take a breath and be ourselves. If we suffer from many, uh, from anything, it seems to be uh, this work ethic life that we are, the workaholic life that we have somehow uh, elevated in this world of ours. And I think it's running rampant, especially in the United States. This, this workaholic uh, method of living has been at us for generations and generations. We are so proud of what we can do. We believe that nothing good can be good if we don't actually work for it and earn it. And that's part of our mental illness. Mental illness is born then in this environment. The harder you try to escape this trap, the more entrapped you become. Now let me say this other thing, and this is the truth I think I want to get at today. Unconditional love is the only environment where freedom and hope are available. Unconditional love is the only environment where freedom and hope are available. The love of Jesus is critical to this story. The freedom for this man to walk away and even to grieve but the freedom to know that Jesus is there and will be there listening caring loving and even somehow walking into us and bumping into us from time to time now this story is hard but at times love is hard but then the other truths come out love is honest and love is sharp, aware of the intentions of the heart. And love is also bold and full of mercy. And in that love and grace, we too find help in our time of need. May we find healing, emotional, physical, and spiritual today. In that unconditional love of God in Christ Jesus, our Lord. Go in peace. Amen.
You call forth different gifts of those who follow you. Encourage us to welcome the diverse benefits and blessings of the whole church in teaching, preaching, prophecy, healing, and more. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Nurturing God, you bring forth crops from the soil and bounty from the trees. Increase the produce of the land and bless all who toil in fields and orchards. Provide for good workers, conditions, and keep them safe. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Empowering God, you offer compassion for those who overlook or forgotten. Open the hearts of local, national, and world leaders to show such compassion and love for their neighbors. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Sheltering God in Jesus, you travel among us without a place to lay your head. Provide safe places to sheep and rest for those who have no place to live. To save ministries that offer food and clothing and peace of mind. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Renewing God, you bring life out of death. Help us part with those things that are no longer beneficial to us and open our hearts to see where new life is uh, budding in this congregation. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. prayer. Eternal God, we thank you for the lives of those who have died. Make us confident in your promise of salvation. Support us in our own journey of faith. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. prayer. Receive these prayers, O God, and those of our hearts known only to you, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And also with you. you. Well, it's getting more difficult to find a way to share the peace these days, but I invite you to get creative and do the best you can. So, whatever. Peace be with you, everybody. Thank you for being here today. As you uh, are seated uh, this morning, I invite uh, the ushers to come forward. If you have not yet uh, placed your offering, you're welcome to do so. Uh, oh, no. The offering is there. It is there. We're going to bring up less that, and then you can uh, add your offerings at the end of the worship service. Sorry. <laughs>
You are indeed holy, almighty and merciful God. You are most holy and great is the majesty of your glory. You so love the world that you gave your only Son, so that everyone who believes in him may not perish but have eternal life. We give you thanks for his coming into the world to fulfill for us your holy will and to accomplish all things for our salvation. In the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread and gave thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. Again, after supper, he took the cup and gave thanks, and gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. For as often as we eat of this bread and drink from this cup, we proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. Christ has died. Christ has risen. Christ will come again. Remembering therefore his salutary command, his life-giving passion and death, his glorious resurrection and ascension, and the promise of his coming again, we give thanks to you, O Lord God Almighty, not as we ought, but as we are able. We ask you mercifully to accept our praise and thanksgiving, and with your word and Holy Spirit to bless us, your servants, and these your own gifts of bread and wine, so that we and all who share the body and blood of Christ may be filled with heavenly and blessing and grace, and receiving and forgiving of sin, may be formed to live as your holy people, and be given our inheritance with all your saints. To you, O God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, be honor and glory in your holy church, now and forever. Amen. Amen. Let us pray together the prayer that Jesus taught Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory. Forever and ever. Amen. At this time, and or at, as you leave, you are invited to take the elements and to receive the body and blood of Christ.
people of God, you are Christ's body, bringing new life to a suffering world. The Holy Trinity, one God, bless you now and forever. Amen. I'm going to spend um, just a moment on our sending song, which we were singing today. I so want to listen. It changes our worship service, but let us uh, listen uh, to the music. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.